Get another light on here. Better. Yeah, we're live. 7.28. I'm a little bit late. I'm late. I'm late for a very important date. Um, tonight we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna talk about one of my favorite subjects. I know you're thinking it's gotta be boost, it's gotta be induction systems. It's not either one of those. Um, then it has to be rod ratio or dimple pistons uh, or dimple something or other, you know, head flow or whatever. They're dimple pistons. So the guys from Speed of Air uh, or are actually somebody an intermediate, I think, that's building motors for them in order to test these, reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to test these. If I wanted to test this, I guess, procedure that they do to these pistons, does it work? And so <laughs> we're going to have a poll. <laughs> you guys get to, you guys get to answer this. Okay, so the poll for tonight, we'll get that up right away, and we'll be talking about it a bunch of times. So um, basically, <laughs> and I'll show you as soon as more people get here, we'll show you the a photo that, that is the thumbnail that I use that is basically a piston with a bunch of golf ball dimples in it, which is what we talk about many times. I'm sure, it's, I'm sure that it's much more scientific than that. I would certainly hope so. The question is for me, and I think the question is for them too, they're, they're saying that this helps on a diesel application. I, I want to see those test results uh, before I would commit either way, probably. I would want to see actual verification that this helps or that it does anything. I, I, I'm skeptical. <laughs> I'm skeptical about this and for a number of reasons. One, I don't know... I, Maybe it's because I'm not an engineer and I don't understand. I'm not a piston designer. Maybe I'm not a, maybe I don't understand thermodynamics the way that I should, but I don't really understand. I have a pretty good vis visualization of what happens in a combustion chamber and what's going on with the piston and that sort of stuff. I don't know how this would affect that. Unless there's potentially some added mixture motion going on from an irregular surface. But I think you can argue that, <laughs> that maybe the chamber is much more responsible for that. Does a piston with valve reliefs change the mixture motion? We know that a different shape piston, you can change the shape of the piston and or the combustion chamber and induce swirl. You can do that with intake manifold. You can do that with with you know dividers in the in the head port and in the chamber. You, there are a number of ways that you can do that. And and so for guys not guys not understanding why that's important, it's it's very important. Um, and actually, I would argue more so for like fuel mileage and efficiency. One of the things that are done to improve fuel mileage is you run a very lean mixture. So you're using less fuel to make whatever given amount of power that you have to make to have the car actually roll down the road against the, the various things that are holding back and using fuel, aerodynamic um, loads, uh, frictional losses, you know, the rolling resistance, all of these things combine to require some some amount of fuel be present or or some amount of power be present to to get this thing to actually overcome those the those barriers it depending on how light the car is how aerodynamic the car is you know th there are a lot of things that can raise and lower how much fuel is required to do that one of the things that they do to improve fuel mileage is do lean burn and and if you have the air fuel under cruise at 18 or 19 to one, like my little Civic VX, it will still maintain that speed just sometimes on a level road, but it'll still maintain that speed, but do that while using less fuel to achieve that because it's, it's not burning nearly as much fuel as it does even at 14.7 to one. So you get, you get that sort of change in fuel mileage. One of the downsides of that, and, and they've tried to overcome it in a number of different ways. One of the downsides of that is you don't have a very homogenous mixture. Also, because you because it's the mixture is not densely populated with fuel molecules, let's call them. 
um, it's hard for fuel propagation to happen in an even manner. So when you ignite the fuel, it doesn't, the flame front doesn't go out and travel in a normal, consistent pattern the way that it would if everything were nice, if everything was homogenized. So what they do is go, okay, because we might have, when we when it's lean, depending on the, the speed and the shape of the piston and the combustion chamber and all these things, you may have, you know, different pockets of fuel in different spots. Well, what they want to do is have basically the same amount of fuel relative to the air everywhere. So then the flame front can be nice and even and you don't get misfires. Well, the way that they do that is they, they induce what's called mixture motion or swirl. You can call it lots of different things. But what they're trying to do is get this stuff mixed up so that we don't have pockets of, you know, more fuel over here and less over here. Because if there's less over here, it's more likely to, to uh, pre-ignite. It's also less likely to burn. So you get, if the spark fires and then that, that side over there says, hey, look, I don't really have enough fuel to burn. So I'm not going to burn. So that's going to be misfire. So catch me next time on the next cycle and we'll try to burn that time. Well, if you swirl all that around and then you get an even amount, it's more likely to catch on fire and spread. Once it catches on fire, usually pretty good things happen. Um, they do it that way by inducing swirl. So that, so with it, when the airflow comes in, it swirls all this mixture around. They can, like I said, they can do it with dividers. They can do it with airspeed. They can do it with piston design. You look at a you look at a piston design on a diesel with a big centrally located and and the the um, direct injected motors are a very similar thing. Um, you look at the design of the piston. They can also do it that way. So. <clears throat> One of the things that Honda did way back, and people have done it and, and still experiment with it, is uh, their CVCC motors, that, which is basically a stratified charge. So what they do to get good burn is they have a tiny little cha chamber that has a good air fuel mixture. It's 14, 7 to 1 or 12 to 1 or 13 to 1, and they ignite that mixture, but they're not doing very much of it but they got a really good burn. And then a valve opens and they inject that hot jet stream of stuff into the other leaner mixture and it gets good burn. And that actually had worked very, very well back in the day. And, and, it's, and it's a way to do it. It's not quite as good as just getting the mixture in there to burn without doing a richer, a richer sub mixture and then injecting it in. The fuel mileage isn't quite as good, but it still works. And so there are, like I said, there are ways to get around that. I don't know if dimpling the pistons does that. <laughs> I would almost believe in, in looking at the pattern and we can take a look at that. I, I'll, I'll bring the, I'll bring the photo up and bring you around so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So this is, this is a piston. I, this might be a, this to me, this looks like a gas piston, not, not a diesel piston. So this might be something that they're, that they have and that's ready to test in a gas engine. It's got valve reliefs in it. It looks kind of like a, a dish LS piston, if you will. So you can see, and if you look at that long enough and look at the pattern, to me, the pattern looks symmetrical. So what, what I would think, <laughs> and may, maybe it would lend more internet conspiracy stuff to this. What I would think would be cool is if, if we had a pattern to this, that induced swirl. I don't know if it does that, but it would, it would almost make it more believable. Um, I don't know that. I don't know that this is going to do anything. You guys, let me know what you think. Do you, do you think it's? Let me know. Do, do you think it's going to do anything on a gas engine? I also don't know how it does anything on a diesel engine. I I suspect that it's. I I'm very skeptical going in that we would see any change. And the problem with that I have, I have a couple of problems with testing this. I'm going to have a meeting with these guys and I'll bring up all these points. The The one is that the way that they want to test it is to have two motors. So they want to build two identical, otherwise, I guess, identical motors and then run them one with these pistons and one without and, and see if it's, you know, does one do better than the other? Obviously right away, <laughs> red flags are going off like, okay, well, how exact are these things? How how perfectly matched are these two combinations? Other than that, are is the deck height the same? You know, how far down is the piston? You know, are the rods exactly the same? Is the, are the bearing clearances identical? You know, there's a lot of things that go into making a motor, and even just making one do exactly the same as the other one is not an easy feat. 
even with no changes, getting them to be exactly the same is, is, can be problematic. And then, so are we looking for one horsepower? I hope not. <laughs> Cause if we're looking for that, I don't really want to go looking for that. Um, is it more than that? And it, so, so you see my problem, is it, you know, is it going to do anything? And are we even starting off on, on level ground here? On, on a, do we have a level playing field to, to actually compare the two? Because because if they're brand new motors, do we you got to break them in exactly the same? You got to run exactly the same oil, the same the same amount of oil, the same filter, all of that stuff. The pumps have to be identical. You know, it's a it's a lot of things. It's a lot of things to be looking at. Um, the other question that I'm that I'm going to have is is if if I do run this, um, in no way am I endorsing anything. I don't do that for other stuff. My job is, hey, we were, I, I would almost rather have them go, we're not even going to tell you which one of these is this one and which one of these is this one. We'll just call it A and we'll just call it B. And then this one, I can run it and break it in and do all this stuff. And then this one does this and then this one does this. Short of seeing a change in power, I don't know what we would see. We're not going to be able to run brake specific fuel consumption. We're not going to be able to run fuel mileage numbers. None of that is going to happen on the engine dyno. So if that's what they're looking for, that's best done, uh, you know, in a very, very difficult, structured, detailed, regimented test, all the words that I could throw out of it, um, I, you know, in a car or a test lab that where, where you could do a rolling road and have everything be the same. That That's a much more strict thing. I, I don't know. I mean, what do you guys think? Do you guys think that this is a... <laughs> you know, having, having spoken to lots of people about dimpled stuff on ports and things, I think we have a pretty good idea of, of whether it has usefulness or not, but I'm, I'm always open to testing, but you know, I'll have to see what happens here. This is just a, you know, this is just an interesting thing. You guys can let me know. We're seeing a lot of yeses here so that they, people definitely want to see it tested. We are live. That's right. The process does work. And on diesels, it cuts the emissions down drastically. So somebody explained to me that the process does work. What do you mean it does work? What does it do? How does it cut emissions down? Does it, does it, is it supposed to be enhancing mixture motion? Only if the dimples go all the way down to the gas port. I don't think we'll do anything more than lower compression. It is, it does do that. And that's important. Gail Banks would know. I don't know if Gail's tested this. <laughs> you had me at, should I test? There we go. Pistons are lighter. There, see, there's all these things like our, so, so on the compression side, if I don't know if all these dimples add up to one CC or something, I don't know what, it, I don't know what it would be. It'd be interesting to find out. Um, I suspect in looking at those that it's, can't be much more than that. So there would be a change in compression. So then are they going to raise the piston up to, you know, or, or change the, the chamber volume of the head to change that. And then we have, then we have a flat top with a different size chamber head. And then this dimpled one with a different size chamber head. And does that part of it make any difference? So, so the thing is, there's, there's a lot of stuff. Well, if it turns out like Eric's, uh, Eric Weingartner's port job with the dimples, he has a no-go. Dimples on pistons make the engine go vroom. All right. Need a super richy shirt. Dimple for doing the oil and friction the same as a top for the hotspot. I would call it detonation reduction, but I know how. Transmissions like the ZF have taken half the rollers out. That doesn't seem like a good idea for a bearing. Um, proving something does not work is still proving something. I agree. I, that, that's why I test things. I mean, in, when I was doing engine masters, I proved that way more things didn't work or didn't benefit me in terms of the score for the engine masters motor it proved way more things didn't work than, than the few things that did. Dennis, what's going on? Could you test a dimpled piston on an engine prone to detonation to see if they help try an old smog air engine with open chamber heads? I don't know what they have in mind for the test motors. 
I think the surface unevenness will slow the burn. Take a regular piston and add the dimples with the drill press. It's, I, th I don't think that this is going to be a drill press thing. My neighbor had one of the CVCCs. I wish I had one of those. When, I, when I've been looking for vehicles to run this AMR 500 on, I've come across a couple of those and I'm <laughs> very, very tempted. I like those. I just like that technology. I think that's awesome. I like the VX too. I think that that's very cool. So swirl effect via five valves per cylinder. Five valves per cylinder itself does not induce swirl. I had a five valve motor. Um, it does not itself induce swirl unless they were to, like Honda does with the four valve VX motor, open the intake valves up at different times. So they open up one valve before, excuse me, a little bit before they open up the other valve, at least in pre VTEC mode on the on the VTEC efficiency motors. It, this will be not boosted. You think it, Blaine, you think it'll be like a piston flip? How many CCs less are they relative to the second motor? I don't know. I don't know what the, I don't know what the total adds up to. Doesn't it make the chance of detonation a lot more possible? I see, I, I don't see that this, I don't see this as curing potential detonation unless it does do mixture motion. Definitely test it just to get the data. Yeah, Michael, I think that the uh, his comment was that said the golf ball dimples have been tested on cylinder head and don't seem to make much difference. So don't hold your breath. But again, just like with the difference between the dimples on a golf ball while it's going through its trajectory and spinning, that's a different thing than head flow. And the head flow is a different thing than this because this, this is not that. And all three of those things are different. And so the different applications for that. So I'm just, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it is different. Seems like it obstructs swirl. You just you need the super richy dimple pattern in there though, the swirl inducing pattern with with different depths and and so I'd like to see that. I, I don't know if it would do anything. It just looks cool. A piston is compressing air, not flying through it. And diesels, what I understand is that they create turbulence on the piston surface, which keeps fuel from sticking to the piston, keeping the mixture suspended and more homogenized. That's what we're talking about. Does it does it enhance mixture motion in some in some way? But you would think if you are doing the same thing that they do like in ports, that you want a rough surface. And I don't know if this smooth surface constitutes a rough surface because it has irregularities in it. I would, I would like to talk to an engineer about that. The guys that design this. Anything you just will watch if we're being honest. See, that's what I like to hear. I just uploaded YouTube phone app again. That's the second time this month. Four stopped the background task and cleared cache. It fixed it. Piston is not a golf ball. It isn't spinning through the air yet. Very different things. <laughs> Julius, you think it's all snake oil? Are the are the super touring guys using it? Diesels do not have uh Good distribution, that's true. Reliance swirl to mix air and fuel. And also heat from blow, from a turbo. It, well, they get plenty of heat from compression also. I can see it doing something on a diesel. See, I don't, I wanna, I wanna know why it would, first of all, I wanna know if it does anything. Then I wanna know if it does something on one and not the other. And then I wanna know, does it do something on both? And does it do different things on both? See, that's, this is the problem with dyno testing is that all it does is give you more questions. Cures detonation by lowering compression. See, that would be something. I, I could I could understand that. I get behind that. I, I have enough understanding of what's going on to, to get behind that. Richard, I have a friend with a L3157. He wants to put a cam into a Suburban and have a streetable, but with a nice chop. Would you recommend? Plans on running 87 octane and 456 gears. Um, there, 
uh, comp has a bunch of, and probably other guys do too, but comp has a bunch of hydraulic roller stuff for that late model, late ish model, small block Chevy. So something, something 218, 224 kind of thing would be good for him. And if he puts a camshaft in it and he has stock compression in, he's probably going to improve, um, you know, he's going to change the detonation threshold. On my BMW engine, they use idle control valve and idle air ports to generate swirl at low. Where, where are they inducing that air? And are they, is that air going into the combustion chamber? In the diesel world, dimples have reported to be amazing. I'm skeptical. It does increase surface area of the crown of the piston, maybe increases the heat stress on the piston, maybe. Well, maybe it would help um, uh, with heat dissipation because of the greater surface area. But I don't know. <laughs> so have you seen the L8P with 122 horsepower from a cam swap? I don't know what an L8P is, um, but 122 horsepower from a cam swap, if it's an LS, um, that's that's not hard to do. I have one that has 175. So, so if you start with a really small cam and you put the right cam in something, it, it can make big power. They should put the dimples on the bottom of the piston to increase the surface area for cooling on the, on the underside of it. Spiral grooves in the intake runners. They do have spiral grooves in the throttle body spacers, which swirl the air, the, they tornado the air. See. Joe Malfa, the guy who came up with this and founded Speed of Air, originally developed it for Indian V-twin motorcycles. It works. So what does it do? How, how I, it works is a not of enough of a definition for me. I want to know what it does. So I ever done rifling grooves through an intake manifold chamber down to the piston chamber to start a swirl effect. They have put dams in there, dividers. I don't know. I've never seen I've never seen spiral rifling. That'd be that'd be a pretty good CNC program. Racer Dave, good. I'm glad you're here. I spent years on my wet flow bench where I could run a piston in the bore and test the carb for the piston for wet flow. What I learned is the best wet flow is when the port is correct to begin with. Yep. Coating may have a small effect on the scourge, but honestly, all I see is a gimmick that's going to be very slightly increase the overall CC of each chamber by something like 0.1%. Yeah, and see, one thing I, I mean, this piston obviously is coated and and you, you obviously would want to make sure that both pistons are, are, both of them are coated just to make sure. Just again, it's another variable you've got to eliminate. <laughs> a powered tornado in the intake tube. Yeah, get a spinny thing. It, the spinny things work really good when you put them on the exhaust <laughs> and then force air in. I know those ones work good. We'll see a, we see a power difference with those. The idle air ports on the BMW go all the way into the cylinder head, the exit just before one of the intake valves. So one valve gets more airflow than the other, hence we're okay, cool. But how is it generating that extra airflow? Doesn't it have to generate that extra airflow through induction, through the movement of the piston? Is a 2.8 or six cylinder and 84 Super NA worth anything? Yeah, it's worth putting a turbo on. The throttle white spacers did sound good. <laughs> uh, L8T, oh, an L8T, I know what an L8T is. As a GM performance crate engine now, the bigger cam and 523 horse, 523 horsepower is an L8P. I'll have to look those up. I don't get out much.
been studying a bit on LS build to gather parts and information so I can ask questions of a company called Thunderbolt Motors, which has been around for 80 years. I'm not familiar with those guys. Speed of Air is one company that has been said so had that has had success with it, along with real world testing. They have testing information available on their websites. From doing more wet flow port development and down testing, I arrived at the best port chamber combination. My CHI 208 port ran with a total of 17 degrees of timing. Piston was black 17 or 360 degrees around. 17 degrees doesn't seem like very much timing, especially for RPM. I mean, the the timing is has to do with engine speed too. I think what it does depends on designs. If we spiral ported the whole intake and following chambers and also designed a dimple piston and exaggerating swirl, I'm sure efficiency and a better burn is likely. Okay. It'd be worth the test of dimpling a compressor wheel to see if it can increase efficiency on a compressor map. That would be interesting. I, I'd like to see somebody try that. And I'm really surprised, honestly, given the CNC wheels, given the ability goodness wheels, that somebody hasn't done that um, just to try it. Because in a, in a wheel, just like changing the spacing between the blades, you <laughs> you increase volume. So would that in and of itself make the thing flow more? We have a thing in Australia called the Cyclone. It's a set of static blades that you put on top of your carb or before the throttle. They claim a 15% gain in power and economy. 15% is a lot. <laughs> That's a lot of power. Trust the turbo engineers to have the best turbo already. The slower frame front, slower frame Flame front, not frame. I, I just keep trying to read that. Also slightly lowers the peak cylinder pressure, but raises the mean cylinder pressure during combustion. Any of the tricks that might work is only a Band-Aid for a design flaw somewhere else. That's an interesting perspective. <laughs> Everyone's correct, but not really. I, I get that. Uh, should I test the dimple piston on a gas engine? 87% are saying yes. I know what Dan's vote's going to be. He's not here tonight yet, but. At light throttle, the idle air valve does most of the work. The primaries in each car. Okay, I, I get that. I see how that would work. I feel you. I feel you were on the same page. So they've got a, a metered vacuum leak that they're putting to good use by, by adding filling. What's some good cost-effective turbo manufacturers? The I, I've run a lot of uh, turbos from China. So I, I've had good luck with them. Brian Tooley now has a whole thing of turbos that they sell. The guys from VS Racing, Borg Warner's pretty affordable. So, Summit's got a bunch of them. I feel like a dummy because I deleted the idle valve. On your BMW, you deleted it? I don't think you lost any low speed power. I think that that's going to be a cruise thing. Uh oh, Tim. You know, that's one thing you don't want to have is a bad dentist or a proctologist. Do you ever mess with German V8s? Not I haven't run any on the engine dyno. Golf ball dipples have been implemented in Europe for quite some time. They see 10 to 15 percent more flow. That that can't be anywhere near right. <laughs> I 
a 15% increase in flow is huge. That that's the amount that a guy wants to get from porting ahead versus not porting ahead. The 300 C, if you have a 300 CFM head and you can get 330 out of it or 340 out of it, that's even better or 345, that would be even better. <laughs> uh, yeah, Th that's a lot. That's all I'm saying. It's a lot of power. But, you know, that's why we test. Most aftermarket turbos are rebadged Borgs or some other company, unless it's Precision or some big company. Nobody's manufacturing their own turbos. Well, the the manufacturers in China are manufacturing their own turbos. They might be copies of something, but they're they're still doing the manufacturing. I'm looking at boosting an Audi 4.2 liter. That's why I was asking. Swapping an Audi driveline into a 68 Mustang should be fun. Yeah, it's that's unique. That's kind of cool. And and if that motor makes good power NA, like if it's a 300 horsepower motor or a 400 horsepower motor, I don't know how much power it makes NA, but or if it's a factory turbo one, even better, then you can make lots of power. Not many shops do golf ball dimples with success. I, I I would like to see them just get 10 CFM from, from a port <laughs> with dimples and without dimples. I'd like to see that kind of change. What I suspect is happening is, well, we have to do the port for the dimples. So the port's different. <laughs> and so if the port was just different without the dimples, it'd still flow more air. That's what I suspect. I don't know if that's true because I don't know which heads you're talking about. And um, but that's going in, that would be my first thought. John, just over 300 NA. So that's good. So then you add like, you know, seven and a half pounds of boost, you're at 450 or something. That's not a problem. Uh, I do not speak Portuguese or German. But I do know how to ask where the where is the library in Spanish. I, I'm I'm all for I <laughs> I think people get the wrong idea when I test things the way that I test them that and tell them that their baby is ugly essentially that hey this 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 didn't work they think that I'm that I'm a negative Nelly and I'm not I'm very optimistic um, but <laughs> I'm also realistic I, I want it to work just like I want Bigfoot to be real and I want the Loch Ness monster to be real and I want and I want you know. I want UFOs and all, I want all that stuff, but <laughs> I do have a, an open mind and, and, you know, going in, I, I want to see the proof. Spanish is not Portuguese. I know that's what, that's what makes it humorous. That, that's, 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 that's the definition of irony. I watched a recent Adam Savage video about the golf ball car. A big three company did the same with an SUV. Results are not replicated. Makes you think we need a raindrop shaped dimple on the runner for better flow instead of a ball nose dimple. That's the thing. Could you do different kinds of troughing? And like I said, are they directional? And I, I have I have lots of questions. I want, I want it. I want all the magic things to work. I want, I want the fancy tip spark plugs to add 15 horsepower. I want the plasma ignitions to add 15 horsepower. I want spark plug wires 
you know, that are shielded and grounded and, and high energy, whatever kind of double wazoo, you know, precious metal spark plugs. I want them to make lots of power. I want all the things to work. I want there to be, I want there to be magic in the world. The world needs more magic, but that doesn't mean it's there. Yeah, and I would hope if somebody were developing this, that those would all be things that would have been tried or at least 3D modeled so that you could, you know, test them. You would want to try all sorts of different, you know, configurations of these dimpling if that's the road that you're going down or grooves or whatever you want to try. <laughs> stickers add five horsepower. Do, and the bigger stickers add more, right? Electric turbos, that, that actually does work. There's a 72 bug with a turbo VR6. Should I buy it? Yes, absolutely. Both because it's a 72 bug, which I had. I had a Super Beetle, but I don't think it was the 72. Mine might have been a 73. I don't know when the Super Beetle came out. Um, but a turbo VR6 is also other guys, so that's very cool. If you tested the Briss semi-surface discharge plugs, I do have, and I found some, and I and I apologize to the guys from Brisk who some guys sent me some of the plugs. I'm sure from one of the um, MPMC conferences, uh, and I still have them, but I haven't run them in anything, but I do, I do want to test them. What is the magic on ring gap for 5.3 liter at 10 pounds? You, you should have ring gap so that you don't stick the rings together and snap the piston. Look up speed of air pistons, modify my intake so it's louder, makes it faster too. That's right. That's like cutting your mufflers off, right? The big advantage is not power, it's emissions and efficiency. But but what is uh, efficiency? Are you talking about fuel mileage? I think it's a 12 volt, 12 valve VR6. Is the VR6 in the front or the back? Beatlemania. I think you should test them in a Honda with a pent roof combustion chamber with a plug in center. Again, another good point. Do, 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 does the dimpling lend itself more to particular chamber designs, four valve, two valve, um, you know, big intake valve, small intake valve, chamber size, big chambers, small chambers, you know, because a big chamber, like if we look at a 317 head on an LS, for example, we've got a fairly inefficient chamber. W would this help with that? Cowboy is not just for Corvettes anymore. I now used to race against the Callaway guys. I didn't actually. I was in a lower class, but which you know, you know me, so you know that that's true. VR6 is in the back, six inches longer than a car, but it's turbo, no clue on transmission. So it's hung way out the back. So is this like a wheelie machine then? Because you know that you can make a lot more than 36 horsepower with the turbo VR6. Probably 10 times that. I'm curious about adding resonators horns to the intake on the throttle body for maximum sound or otherwise non NVH reasons. So you should hook up one of those um, spinning rings to go. Woo, woo. It's not going to take very much to spin one of those. You probably wouldn't even get too much of a, um, of an inlet restriction. <laughs> So to mimic uh, Admiral modular power, two valve, three valve, four valve, dimpled piston test, same engine, different heads and pistons. Oh, so you want it tested with all of those head configurations? <laughs> that sounds like a lot of fun. 
450 horsepower. Oh, that, that would be cool. That's even better. Put a pinwheel on it. That's good. Speed of air is working with piston dimples. That's, that's what this discussion is all about. Basically, it cleaned up to a point where an old 12 valve runs cleaner than a 6.7 with Def and Cat. I need, I need someone to tell me why it cleans it up. An inefficient chamber would be a Hemi, that's right, or a pent roof, four valve. Or I was talking about testing the Honda, the plugs in a Honda or something, yeah. I don't have any Hondas that we can run. We can't run one on the engine dyno anyways, unless it's a um, standard rotation. Dimples in the combustion chamber might not be a good idea. Fuel in the dimples is not atomized. It's just raw fuel. Well, not according to what they're saying in the diesel world. Oh, you just give an admiral a shout out. He he would definitely recommend that. And then and then with boost, NA and with boost on all of them, right? Because you gotta go if you're gonna go in, you gotta go all in. So you got a shadow ops, you got a one year old there? Yeah, our, our dogs are definitely, our puppies are definitely, our one-year-olds are definitely lap dogs. One of them more than the other. One of them, obviously, just is in love with Lisa and wants, wants to curl up with her all the time. But he's definitely a snuggler. The other one comes up every once in a while and then goes away. Should, uh, Robert, is that a question? Piston should be hot enough to make the fuel that touches it vaporize. I'd like to see um, the gradient for piston temperature during the cycle process and see what it gets up to and how long it gets up to that. <laughs> With a diesel, if the dimples pistons don't work, you just add fuel and boost until it does. That's the thing, you know. You don't want to manipulate stuff. In a way, I see it as a more concentrated form of chamber softening. An old EMC article had interesting results. Chamber softening definitely does work. We know that that works. Um, Brian's used that on a, a few of his race motors, and it works to the tune of three or four degrees of timing, so at the same detonation threshold. So it's a lot. Pre-ignition and detonation are bad. That's true. We don't like either one of those. Those can stay home. Because we don't, we don't need that. I'm just concerned about the, I'm concerned about the test motors. I'd, it's, I, I know how hard it is to make things be duplicates. <laughs> Freiburger and those guys went through that not long ago. Well, it probably has been long ago now, but the when they tried to do a iron head, aluminum head test, because Dart had supposedly the same heads for big blocks, except they weren't. <laughs> they're not they're not the same head. And so when you're testing these, um and I know the guys from West Tech have run uh, like multi-engine boat engines on the dyno to just to make sure that they're all sealed up and working like they're supposed to. And the engines are identical, all the same parts. And yet <laughs> one of them invariably makes a little bit more than the other between five and 10 horsepower. It's a pretty big amount. And so that, that's going to skew the test. If you just had that kind of change from whatever, from, you know, ring drag or 
you know, all of the, the hatch patterns got to be the same. You know, there's just, there's so much. Just so much. 87% are saying yes. We'll go down to live chat for a little while before we get off. Um, shadow ups. Why, why do you have brake fluid in all the cylinders? Are you trying to, are the cylinders rusty or something? What are you trying to do? So I wanted to ask on a Trinity manifold, does it have cast in bell mouse? If it doesn't, could you theoretically construct longer runners that you could bolt onto the inside? Those actually stick through the plenum and they do have a radius um, edge to them. It, you could machine those off and then put runners in there, which is kind of what I want to do on the low ram. It would be easier on the low ram to do. But obviously all that is possible. If you want to see what you can take a look and go through my channel, Julius, and look at the, there's a Trinity LS3 or LS7 intake test that we did. And the, and the um, James from Brian Tooley Racing, they took the, they ran it without the lid on it. So you can see the ends of the runners, what they look like. And that's that's the thumbnail you can see. And also there's a photo of it during the video if you want to look at that. But you can just go to the channel. And I think that the lead photo, the thumbnail photo, is that intake manifold without the, without the plenum on it. You're trying to unseize it? Okay. Two stages, two stage ignition and better controlled time events would be the next big step for motorsports. Able to get into Lambda 2 and efficiently. Richard, did you go to Hot Rod Power Tour West? No, sir. This is off topic, but I'm looking forward to Dave Advisor talking more in depth about his polyquad technique. David does some cool stuff. Personally, you'd use acetone and transfluid. Transfluid is what we use to get the, the rotary stuff unstuck. When we had a um, an apex seal, we had those things lock up, pour transmission fluid in it, and we just use a big breaker bar and move it back and forth. You let it sit for a while, but you'd, you'd move it back and forth, and eventually it would free up, and then it would spin, and if it spins, it wins. Richard, what size cam for a motorhome 440 stock, low compression piston, stock head, dual plane, heavy application, some sort of truck or RV-ish cam. So it's going to be a 206, 212 kind of thing, or maybe on a 440, you could go to a 212, 218. Solenoid control valves. Yeah, that's been tried. I do have a drill stem as a cheater bar. Yeah, we would use a six or eight foot breaker bar on it, but. Yeah, Julius, that's actually in the works. It seized up under idle motion, not a rev out. So did it. If it seized up while it was running, that's not a rust situation. Something either broke. I don't know if it's um if it was under idle, it can't you almost can't get it too lean to cause you know piston scuffing and for it to lock up in the bore because it definitely can do that at wide open throttle. But I've never seen it happen at idle unless something is catastrophic. Low oil pressure. That can do it. <laughs> Log up a rod or something. The transmission fluid and um, acetone looks like a steak marinade. It should, that should eat the steak, right?
Yeah, my guess is you're going to find something not good on a, a rod or a um, or a main journal. I found that. I found that on the last aluminum LS that I had. Bottom end. Yeah, friction welding something. <laughs> having something self-friction weld itself is not a good thing. I already know the engine needs to go through. Yeah. Hopefully it didn't hurt anything. Like cranks are pretty easy to find. Even it, I like to replace the rods too, if it does that. I And I don't ever just replace one or two because I don't know. I just, <laughs> I think that they're all bad. What's your plans for the aluminum Gen 453? It's going to go together. And that one's actually going to get sold, I think. But that one's a that one's going to be a really good motor because that's going to be a a forged rod, forged piston. It's got a DOD delete. It's it's got a it's got a whole bunch of nice stuff on it. Rapid airspeed changes from small to low volume, but fuel reacts slower. So does the dimpling really just super mix the fuel with a rapid buffeting effect if it's located properly? I don't know. That, that I'd like to see. I'd like to see. You know, we need to see those. Um, the one, the things that they have up on YouTube that were where we have the clear combustion chamber. We need to see that. I mean, you could do it at idle for a little while and see, see what's happening. Uh, I think it'd be interesting to test these pistons. You can't exactly write it off without the official data. I know. And I don't, like I said, I don't want to write it off. I want it to work. I want it to do something. Thinking a core swap for a 5.3, I can get honest answers out of the Thunderbolt motor, guys. Okay. I watched a YouTube video of an Argentinian Nova with a 250 inline six making 420. So it was um it was boosted then, right? So, Julius, are you headed out to the pub right now? Watch out for the King Browns. So, we're going to go ahead and end our poll at 87%. Probably need pistons that are coated with the same coating as well. Yeah, we talked about that. All of that has to be obviously identical if they're skirt coated which i'm for um i think that that's a good idea and then these look like they're thermal barrier coated on the top too i work at a pub second job pharma's not made money this year sorry to hear that but i'm happy to hear that you have a second job watch a youtube video of a 283 revving up to 12,000. 12,000 seems like a lot A 250 inline six making 420 NA. That's a lot of work. So vinyl top cars are faster than painted top cars. Yes, that's true. I can verify that statement. <laughs> I want to verify that statement. It's, it's, it's actually not true, but I want it to be true. Um, I, I, ha I have a previous owner of a vinyl top car. My Camaro had a, my 70 split bumper car had a vinyl top. It was green, lime green with a, a white vinyl top originally. And then it became red with a black vinyl top. Cause I, I, uh, what was the plastic coat stuff? I, I, it was, a, it was the best thing that I ever did though. Cause I did it on, uh, you know, hot Northern California summer day. It was a hundred plus degrees and I painted it all black after, after scrubbing the heck out of it with Ajax and everything and, and a white, uh, you know, a, a brush, <laughs> it's not, not a metal one. Um, and scrubbed it all, cleaned it off really well and then masked it, you know, a little bit <laughs> and then painted it. And what I did, it was permanent. I mean, I used to scrub the heck out of that thing and the black just never came off. It was awesome. 
My red 71 SS has a black vinyl top. Yeah, my girlfriend's at the time had a, her her blue. Uh, she had a 71 SS also, and they that had a black vinyl top on it. It was really nice. But then there's the weight of the vinyl top. Yeah, but the 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 texture of the vinyl top is almost like golf ball dimpling, so it actually makes the car faster at speed. My beloved 68 Cougar. I like those. Caribbean blue with a black vinyl top. My favorite thing about the Cougars is the is the blinky taillights. The turn signal ones. I think giving specs on the engine, but only made only that made 420 horsepower NA. The sound was glorious. It had to be very high RPM and it had to be some kind of aftermarket aluminum head on it and Lots and lots of camshaft to, to get 420 horsepower to 250 inches. And maybe it was bigger than that. I don't know. It's a pretty good specific output. My tail lights sequenced off rather than sequencing on. Little DC motor was spinning backwards. <laughs> to confuse people, right? He's wait, he's turning toward the center. I would be kind of awesome. Never, never let him know what you're doing. Uh, Ken, did you mean at one point yacht racers dimpled the holes of their boats to reduce drag and it worked? I would imagine that they tried lots of coatings and stuff. Maybe even water wetter. Two more minutes. I don't know why they would try that. You guys make me think I need to put a vinyl top on the CRX drag car. You could, you could, <laughs> you could put a faux, you, you actually could put a vinyl top on it because you could wrap it in vinyl with something clever. And then you could say that you have a vinyl top. And it could even say vinyl top on it. Then it would be like a double entendre thing kind of thing. Dimbler machine swirls in the back of the intake valves. See, I don't know. I don't know if that would do anything. If it would do something, I don't know if it would do it at low speed and induce swirl, which is when you want swirl to happen. CRX needs a plastic belly belly pan. I did that on my Sprint, and I did that on the Del Sol. We did that on the Civic. I did a rear one and a front one. Swimmers use the shark skins, yep. Jammers. Yep. Vinyl wrap, vinyl top, see? The Novata T56 sequential gearbox. Isn't turbulence bad in the combustion in the compression chamber? In the combustion chamber? No, it's not actually. Mixture motion actually is a good thing, especially um, especially under cruise. Pressure turbulence is probably bad. Like pre-ignition, <laughs> that's definitely bad. That sort of turbulence. Did you ever run a 6.2 with a truck Norris cam? No, I did not. I've never even run a 6.0 with one. Ford sold a textured painted top, which mimicked a vinyl top back in the 70s. Wow, a faux vinyl top. I put sequential blinkers on my Impala. Textured paint tops on trucks. Yep. You can get the Landau top. And on that note, 
it is time to go. See how see how quickly one hour goes by? It's kind of awesome, though. Uh, working on more videos. Hopefully have one up tomorrow. But I will see you guys all regardless tomorrow.